In this video, we are going to show you why we need a mid signal verification in any mid signal system, such as ADC, PL, Certis, or any system on chip SOC. To be honest, we are human beings, and it's unavoidable to make any mistake while we build any circuit, even a stupid mistake. The cost is very high. But we can avoid the mistake by any helpful verification flaws. I believe anyone watching the video should have done any simulation well in your circuit block assignment. Therefore, you might wonder why we did not catch the mistake if we did all the verification on a checklist from a few mistake images, you may know why we did not catch the mistake. A service or SOC system cannot be done by one person in a limited timeline. Therefore, every circuit block is assigned to a different designer, and each block should be designed and verified well. But because of miscommunication, between designers or blocks, the anchor or digital signal type could be unclear between the boundaries. For example, one anchor type mistake could be both sync current or both source current connected, and there is no current flow at all. Another anchor type mistake is the wrong polarity. Because of an extra inversion somewhere, then the algorithm feedback amplifier was supposed to be in a negative feedback loop. But the inversion mistake makes it become an oscillator because of the positive feedback. In addition to the algorithm mistake images, could you think about any digital mistake images for 5 seconds? Right. Usually, the service PMA will verify in a spice, but the register transfer level RTL in digital circuit design must be designed in a digital flow. Lots of miscommunications could happen at the boundary between the ERG portion of the service and the RTL in the digital block. Again, the inversion or the pin order could be messed up as well. For example, the clock's wrong priority because of an extra inversion somewhere may create the timing margin issue for the retiming data in the interface. The parallel data bus at the digital interface would have the wrong order from the LSB first to MSB first and vice versa. After seeing a few mistake images, you should know running a top level, including the whole integral and digital blocks, is a must. Then, let's go through the mistake images with a few methodologies and see if that works or not. We know verifying the DC operating point in a small block is easy and a must. It might be also doable even for the entire SOC chip. So, a simple DC operating point in a spice might easily catch the error inversion mistake. Unfortunately, it's still difficult to catch other mistakes such as any inversion clock or swap data stream in the digital domain. So, what can we do? Think about a real circuit operation images for 5 seconds. Right, the circuit will operate in a time domain sequentially. So, a time domain transition simulation in a transistor level should capture the circuit operation in sequence thoroughly. Is this reasonable verification in the whole SOC or even a smaller service block? Of course not. The intuitive image of running such a big system in a transition simulation would be very time-consuming. 
But why? Yes, lots of circuit blocks with a very complicated spice modeling cause the calculation and simulation time much longer than a small block. But this might be okay if you could run in a short time. What else could be the cause or issue? Think about the time image for 5 seconds. Bingo! Time scale would be an issue. And we can simply show you a time scale of a service as an example here. In service simulation, the most obvious and critical circuitry is its diverse time scales, which presents a challenge for simulation in a 10 orders of magnitude. For example, first, jitter requirements are on the order of 100 of femtoseconds. Second, bit rate are on the order of 100 picoseconds. Third, word rate are on the order of 10 nanoseconds. Fourth, AC coupling time constant on the order of a microsecond. Fifth, PL lock time on the order of 50 microseconds. Lastly, link behavior on the order of a millisecond. Therefore, to simulate in a long simulation time at the order of millisecond and a resolution in hundreds of femtoseconds with a complicated spice model in the whole C-Link is impossible. So, how to simulate such a diverse time scale in a 3D link? Think about the circuit images for 5 seconds. Bingo! We can divide the whole SOC into analog and digital blocks. The analog blocks must be run at the transistor level in a SPICE model to capture the real behavior. But we can simulate the digital block in a hardware description language HDL, such as Verilog. Since the digital block only care about the logic and can be an event driven in the HDL simulation, the Virgo simulation time is much shorter than any time driven SPICE simulation. Therefore, we could divide the mean signal verification for any top level verification down into the digital variable model and ego SPICE model, respectively. Then, we can simulate the signaling between digital and ergo interface together. Is that fast enough? Think about the ergo model images for 5 seconds. Of course not. The spice for the ergo modeling is still too complicated to verify quickly. So, the ergo part still slows down the whole mean signal verification, and we must reduce the angle model complexity. Since we've known the Howard description language HDL is an event-driven modeling, which can reduce lots of computation in the static state and reduce the estimation time. With this HDL modeling for the angle box, What's the other advantage image you get? Correct. Now, both digital and error blocks are modeling through the hardware description language HDL. Therefore, that's a truly mean signal call simulation to reduce the simulation time and connectivity mistake at the same interface. Since we model the error parts in a digital domain through the HDL, do you see any other mistake image? Bingo! The HDL modeling of the ergo block could be wrong. For example, the functionality of the ergo block in the HDL may not match the spice behavior. Also, the input output I.O. pins of the HDL model may not match the schematic I.O. pins as well. It's easy to understand if we show you 
a separate image now. In Spice, you can see the data is sampled in the rising edge clock, and we must follow the same rising edge trigger clock in the HDO model. Similarly, the input output must be defined equally in the Spice and HDO model. Lastly, both I.O. pings such as clock, input data, output data, supply, and ground of the Spice and HDL model must match. The good news is that the HDL modeling of any analog block must be verified by any analog block designer besides the Spice verification. Therefore, usually the HDL model should be valid and can be easily included in a top-level service or SOC simulation. After understanding how the HDO modeling of the analog block was done, let's go through service system modeling. The physical median dependent BMD and physical media attachment PMA portions of the Series are part of a bigger ceiling system. The SPICE is still the key verification tool for the driver, pig detector, prison detector, CTOE, and DFE analog blocks in the PMD, and serializer, deserializer, TSPO, and CDR analog blocks in the PMA. But to model functions, Above PMD and PMA levels, like the physical coding sublayer PCS and controller, the SPICE is no longer a right tool. Instead, an HDL model is a must for all the digital blocks. To achieve a mixed signal verification efficiently, the HDL model for the PMD and PMA ERG blocks is a must. Then, the whole service system can simulate together in the HDL model quickly and catch any mistake between the block boundary. The block boundary could be the interface between the digital and analog blocks. Also, the block boundary could be an interface between any analog blocks. Nonetheless, the design iteration could be quick, even though a few mistakes were caught owing to the fast simulation time of the truly missed signal simulation in HDO modeling. Here are a summarized image of why we need a missed signal verification in a service or SOC. We could make any mistake in any circuit block, so a verification in a simulation is a must and is usually done well at any small circuit block level. But in general, in a service or SOC design, every circuit block is assigned to a different designer. Due to miscommunication between designers or blocks, the algorithm or digital signal type could be unclear between the boundary and result in a few mistakes such as analog bus connectivity, extra inversion in an amplifier, clock inversion, data bus order swap, and so forth. Therefore, we must simulate the whole service or SOC in one environment thoroughly in a time domain transient simulation. But first, the complexity in the big number of circuit blocks and spice modeling are too complicated to run. Last, and most importantly, due to the diverse time scales in a service to simulate in a long simulation time at an order of milliseconds and a resolution in hundreds of femtoseconds with a complicated spice model in the whole ceiling is impossible. Therefore, we could leverage the HDL modeling advantage in digital to a simplified analog model such that both digital and analog blocks are modeling through the hardware description language HDL. Then 
that's a truly mistignal call simulation to reduce the simulation time and connectivity mistakes at the interface. The design iteration or development in the vacation will be much faster than before. Thanks for watching. Before you go, if you are benefiting from low circuit images, I would love to hear your feedback and appreciate your comments down below. Lastly, please share the video link with the people who may be benefiting from it.